This week in IT, do you ever have to grab the attention of specific people in a Microsoft Teams channel, but you don't want to app mention them individually? So I'm going to show you how to set up tags so that you can quickly get the attention of the people you communicate with most. Plus, there's all this week's news, and I highlight some of the best new content on Petri. Earlier this week, Microsoft announced the availability of a new service called Microsoft Security Experts. Now, the idea of this is to provide organizations not only with the technical tools that they need to resolve some of their security issues and, you know, perform some of that maybe investigative work after an attack, but also to provide external help in the terms of real experts and real people. Now, this service is going to be provided in three sections. So there's going to be Microsoft Defender Experts for Hunting, Microsoft Defender Experts for Extended Detection, and response and Microsoft Security Services for Enterprise. Now, this is interesting, the timing of this announcement, because if you remember back to a couple of months ago, everybody was thinking that probably Microsoft was going to purchase a security company called Mandiant. Now, they specialize in providing this kind of expertise to organizations whenever they suffer some kind of major hack. In the end, Google announced that it was going to acquire Mandiant, but I think that this is Microsoft's answer to that. There's been a bit of a hoo-ha this week, love that word, after some people found a link which enabled them to download Microsoft's new unified Outlook client. Now, this isn't ready yet. It's coming to Office Insiders in the middle of June, and Microsoft has said that they would prefer administrators to block access to this client right at the moment because it doesn't contain all the necessary security features that are necessary to keep enterprises safe. So what does this look like? Well, it just looks like Outlook on the web essentially at the moment. And although it's obviously not finished right now, I'm not sure that this is going to be able to replace the desktop version of Outlook. Now, Microsoft hasn't actually said, I think, at this stage, whether this new client is going to replace desktop Outlook. So I think that we can safely assume that this isn't going to happen because I just don't really see that this contains all of the features. It would be such a big regression for enterprises to move to this client. So how this is going to work exactly, I don't know, because they're going to roll it out to Office Insiders, but how are they going to choose? Choose from desktop Outlook, from this new Outlook client? Are they going to call this Outlook Lite or how are they going to differentiate between these two versions of Outlook going forwards? So while this is supposed to be a unifying Outlook project, uh, as far as we know, of course, there are still going to be two actual clients, but maybe that of course will change at some point in the future. If you have to manage the security of on-premises exchange server, Microsoft announced this week that they're going to package some of the updates as executable files instead of MSP, so those Microsoft installer patch files that you usually download these updates as. Now, the reason for that is that sometimes it can cause a bad server state if you run that MSP file, but without elevated privileges. So the idea of wrapping that MSP up in an executable is that it will automatically prompt you for elevation to make sure the update has the necessary permissions to run right from the get-go. Also announced in the last few days is a new service called Outlook Bookings. Now, don't confuse this with Microsoft Bookings. This is a service that's designed to help teams of people schedule meetings. And Microsoft Bookings is only available to the more expensive Microsoft 365 subscriptions. Outlook Bookings is going to be available to a much wider range of subscription plans. And this is basically to help a single user mailbox schedule meetings with other people, either inside or outside or mainly outside of the organization, I guess. So this is a little bit like Calendly, something like that. Now, it's quite interesting because I don't think that Google Workspace offers anything like this built in. So this is going to be a good way for Microsoft to differentiate its platform from Workspace. If you have to manage the network devices in your organization, F5 have confirmed that there's a new remote code execution floor in its big IP systems. 
So there's already a patch out. So you need to test and get that patch deployed to your big IP F5 network devices. Microsoft is also rolling out to a wider range of its customers of Azure AD verifiable credentials. As far as I understand, this is still in preview, but if you're wanting to get your hands on that, check back now with your Azure AD tenant, and maybe you can enable this feature for testing. What it does basically is provide a decentralized means of enabling you to verify certain pieces of information and it's based on blockchain technology. So the main point of this is you don't have to store any of your personal information with Microsoft. It's completely decentralized. And of course, this is a way that you can maybe, you know, verify pieces of information that you wouldn't have been able to do otherwise because you didn't want to put it in the hands of a particular provider like Microsoft or Amazon, for instance. Of course, it was Patch Tuesday this week, and as usual, there have been reports of some issues. One issue is that some people have reported they're not able to start certain .NET applications after installing the update. I think this can be remedied by reinstalling the .NET Framework version 3.5 on the machine, as far as I understood. But hopefully, Microsoft will address this issue going forwards. And those of you using Active Directory certificate services, after this update, there's also been an issue with, I think, uh, device certificate authentication. So if you're using something like Network Policy Server, then this might be a problem for you. So again, before you deploy this patch, make sure that you do your testing. And it's also worth noting that Windows 10 version 20 H2 has already reached end of support now for those of you using the Pro Edition in your business. And one last piece of news, if you have registered for Microsoft Build, you can now go over and start building your agenda because the session schedule has been released. So of course Microsoft is concentrating on next generation experiences for developers, how to build interactive apps for Microsoft Teams and preparing for the metaverse. So it should be an interesting build uh, and it's all virtual so anybody can attend. So in Microsoft Teams if you're in a channel where there's a lot of people and you just want to grab the attention of of a specific group of people, it can be a real pain if you have to at mention every one of them individually. So how can we get around that? Well, there's a feature in Teams that probably not so many people know about called tags. And what this allows you to do is to group people together. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. You see here, I'm in my Argo's dog food team and I'm in the general channel. And I don't want to bother Argo. I just want to grab the attention of a few specific people. So of course I could at mention I don't know, Diego there, who else is there, Alex maybe. Don't have many people in this team, but you can imagine the situation if there were hundreds of members. So I could go through them one by one like this. But instead of doing that, there's a much faster way. So if you come over to the team on the left-hand side of the screen and click the ellipses and come down to the bottom of the context menu and click manage tags. Now here, I don't have any tags created for this team, but I'm gonna create one now. And all I have to do is give the tag a name. So I'm gonna call it design. You can optionally give it a description here. Let's say this is about design discussions only. And I'm gonna add some people. So let's add Alex there and let's add Diego. And I'm gonna create that new tag. And there you can see it in the list of tags. So if I come back to my channel chat here, I'm gonna start a new conversation. And instead of at mentioning those people individually now, all I have to do is type at design. And you can see there, I can now type a message. And just like as if they were at mention, they will see that in their feed with the little at symbol by the side of it. Now, there's one other way that you can do this when you're adding members to a team. So if I come over to my team again and I click manage team, members and guests, you can see here, I've got those people there, not very many people in this team. So let's add a member. I'm going to add Lydia. There she is. I'm going to add her here. 
And you see, I've also got the opportunity to add a tag at this stage. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to put Lydia there and I can either create a new tag by just typing in a name or I can select an existing tag. And as you can see there, we already have design. So I'm going to add her to the design tag and that's it. And this week I want to highlight two new how-to articles that we've got on Petri. The first is uh, What is Datadog the Ultimate Guide? Now this article is an introduction to Datadog. So it's something like Splunk, it's a, a data collection and analysis platform and it takes you through all the basics of how this works and how to get it set up the you know the initial steps of getting started with a Datadog. So if you're interested in things like Azure Sentinel and Splunk Blanc, then Datadog might be an alternative worth looking at. Also this week on Petri, we have an article looking at the differences between Azure Active Directory and Active Directory. So this is comparing, of course, Microsoft's cloud identity platform and Windows Server Active Directory, which you run on premises. So you've got a full breakdown here of all the differences and what, what it means to run in the cloud, what it means to run on-premises and why you might do one or the other or indeed both of course and at the end of the article there's a brief look at some of the other cloud identity platforms that you might consider as an alternative to Azure AD. If you found the content in this video useful then please like it it helps us to get it seen by more people on YouTube and if you'd like to see more of this kind of content then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you're interested in how to quickly find open tabs either in Google Chrome or Microsoft Edge then head over to this video next where I show you how to work with vertical tabs.